In this video, we're going to look at how to compute products and quotients in trigonometric form for complex numbers. So if you have two complex numbers, we're going to call them Z1 and Z2, and they're written in trigonometric form, then if you want to find their product, Z1 times Z2, what you do is you multiply their um, R values by each other, R1 times R2, and then you add their angles together, theta one, theta two. So the result is R1 times R2 cis theta one plus theta two, okay? And then for division, what you do is you divide R1 by R2 and then you subtract their angles. So you would have theta one minus theta two. So whichever complex number is in the numerator, that angle comes first. You subtract the one that's in the denominator theta 1 minus theta 2, so you get r1 over r2, cis, theta 1 minus theta 2. And the second complex number, z2, cannot be 0. One thing to remember when you write your final answer is that theta has to be between 0 and 2 pi. Okay, so sometimes when you're adding them together or subtracting them, you get a negative angle or it's greater than 2 pi, so you have to adjust accordingly. Okay, so just don't forget. Don't forget. Okay, so let's look at some examples here. I have um, Z1 is negative 1 plus I rad 3, and Z2 is rad 3 plus I, and they want us to find the product Z1, Z2, and the quotient Z1 divided by Z2. So before I start, I have to figure out how to write each of these complex numbers in trig form first. So Z1, I'll rewrite it, it's negative 1 plus I rad 3. So first, let's find R for this one. So R1 is going to equal the square root. Remember, it's a squared plus b squared, so negative 1 squared plus rad 3 squared is 3. So this is rad 4, which is 2. And then let's figure out the angle. Now be careful here. So tangent theta is going to be equal to negative rad 3 over 1. But notice here, since the real part is negative and the imaginary part is positive, we are in quadrant 2 with this complex number. And so when is tangent of theta equal to negative rad 3? Well, that would be at 2 pi over 3. So theta 1 is 2 pi over 3. So now I can write z1 is 2 cis 2 pi over 3. Okay, now let's do the same thing for Z2. So Z2 is rad 3 plus I. Notice for Z2, both the real and imaginary parts are positive, so that one's in quadrant 1. R2 is going to be the square root of 3 plus 1 squared, so that's 2 again. Tangent of theta 2 is going to be 1 over rad 3. So that means theta 2 is equal to pi over 6. So z2 I can write as 2 cis pi over 6. Okay, now I'm ready to find the product and the quotient. So for the product, z1 times z2, I'm going to take 2 times 2, r1 times r2, so 2 times 2, and then I have cis, and then I'm going to add the angles together. So I'm going to add 2 pi over 3 and pi over 6. So we have 2 pi over 3 plus pi over 6. And so we're left with 4 cis. And then let's see here. So 2 pi over 3, that's 4 pi over 6, plus 1 pi over 6. That's going to give us 5 pi over 6. Okay, good. Now, this is in trig form, but we need to rewrite our answer in standard form, unless the directions were to indicate otherwise, but just typically go to standard form. So that means I need to figure out what cosine of 5 pi over 6 is plus i times sine of 5 pi over 6. So this is going to be 4 times cosine of 5 pi over 6, that's going to be negative rad 3 over 2. And then sine of 5 pi over 6 is positive, <clears throat> 1 half. And then from here, just distribute. And then we're going to have negative 2 rad 3 plus 2i. And we are done with that one.
Okay, so that was multiplication. Now let's divide them. So Z1 divided by Z2 is going to be 2 divided by 2. Then we have sis 2 pi over 3 minus pi over 6. So 2 divided by 2, that's 1. Sis 2 pi over 3, that's 4 pi over 6 minus 1 pi over 6 is 3 pi over 6. So this is pi over 2. And then let's expand this. So we have cosine pi over 2 plus i sine pi over 2. Well, cosine of pi over 2, that's 0. And then sine of pi over 2 is 1. So this just equals 1i. All right. Good start. Let's look at another example. So z1 is 1 plus i, and z2 is 2i. All right, so first let's write each of these numbers in trig form. Pause the video and see if you can do it on your own, and then check if you got it right. So z1 is 1 plus i. That means r1 is going to be the square root of 1 squared plus 1 squared, which is rad 2. And then theta 1, tangent of theta 1, is going to be 1. Both angles are positive, so theta 1 is pi over 4. So z1 is rad 2, cis pi over 4. And then z2. is just 2i, so r2 is 2, theta 2 we can tell it's just going to be pi over 2, so z2 I can write as 2 cis pi over 2. Okay, now let's find their product and quotient. So z1 times z2 is going to be rad 2 times 2, but it looks better if we write 2 rad 2, cis pi over 4 plus pi over 2. So that's 2 rad 2 times cis of 3 pi over 4, which is going to be 2 rad 2 times uh, cosine 3 pi over 4 plus i sine 3 pi over 4 which is going to give us <clears throat> 2 rad 2. I'm actually going to leave it unrationalized because it's going to be easier right now when I multiply it out. So negative 1 over rad 2 plus i times 1 over rad 2. And I left it that way because, look, now when I distribute the 2 rad 2, the rad 2 is just going to cancel out, which is so nice. So then I have negative 2 plus 2i. All right, cool. Now let's do their quotient. So z1 divided by z2 is equal to rad 2 divided by 2 cis pi over 4 minus pi over 2. So this is going to give us 1 over rad 2. And then I have cis negative pi over 4. Okay, now since I'm going to rewrite it in standard form, I, I can evaluate it at negative pi over 4, but if you were going to um, leave your answer in trig form, then make sure you change that angle to 7 pi over 4. Okay, but since we're not stopping here, it won't matter because I'm going to evaluate it now. So I have 1 over rad 2 times, and then cosine of negative pi over 4, that's 1 over rad 2. And then I have negative 1 over rad 2 as well for sine at negative pi over 4. And then if I distribute this out, I'm going to get 1 half minus 1 half i. Okay. Good. Now let's switch to perhaps easier examples. These are already written in trig form. So the first part is taken care of for you. You just get to evaluate the products and quotients. Okay, so find the product or quotient of the following expressions. And then we're just going to leave our answers in trig form since that's how they were given to us in this case. Okay, 
Um, if it's a nice angle, then maybe we'll rewrite it in standard form. But notice for this first example, when I find this product, I'll take R1 times R2, so that's going to give me 12. And then I'm going to have cis 20 plus 195. So this is going to be 12 cis 215 degrees. So 215 degrees, that's not an angle that we know the values of cosine and sine from the unit circle offhand, so we'll just leave it as is. Okay, next example, 2 cis 2 pi over 3 times 4 cis 7 pi over 6. So this is going to be 2 times 4, so that's 8 cis. Then I have 2 pi over 3 plus 7 pi over 6. So this is going to be 8 cis 11 pi over 6, right? 2 pi over 3 is 4 pi over 6 plus 7 pi over 6. And then I can write this as 8 cosine 11 pi over 6 plus i sine 11 pi over 6. 11 pi over 6, that is in quadrant 4. So we have 8 times rad 3 over 2 plus i times sine is negative 1 half right there. And so we're going to be left with 4 rad 3 minus 4i. Okay. Good. Next one, we're dividing. So this time I'm going to divide 21 by 14. And then I'm going to have cis... 163 minus 44 degrees okay so 21 over 14 i can cancel out a 7 that's going to give me three halves cis 163 minus 44 that's going to be 119 degrees and that's not an angle that we know offhand the values of sine and cosine from the unit circle so we'll just stop okay all right last one like this 6 cis 2 pi over 3 divided by 8 cis pi over 3. So we're going to have 6 divided by 8 cis 2 pi over 3 minus pi over 3. So 6 divided by 8, that's 3 fourths cis pi over 3. Now this one we can evaluate easily. So this is 3 fourths times cosine pi over 3 plus i sine pi over 3. which is going to give me 3 fourths times 1 half plus i times rad 3 over 2, which is equal to 3 eighths plus 3 rad 3 over 8 i. All right, looks good. Now, probably the most exciting application is de Moivre's theorem. So de Moivre's theorem has to do with taking a complex number and raising it to a power. So if you have a complex number written in trig form and n is some integer, if you want to raise your complex number to the nth power, all you need to do is raise r to that power and then you multiply the angle theta by that power, by n. So the neat thing is it comes from the fact that we know the rule for multiplication, you multiply the r values by each other and you add the angles. So if you're raising something to the nth power, then that's why you're gonna be multiplying r by itself n times. So you're raising r to the n and then you're gonna add theta to itself n times. So that's why you're multiplying by n. Okay, so here we go. We just have two fun little <clears throat> examples. So use de Moivre's theorem to change the given complex number to the form a plus bi where a and b are real numbers. So notice here, for example, a, it's, it's already in standard form, negative one plus i. But my goodness, you don't want to raise that to the eighth, meaning you don't want to multiply that whole thing out, right? You don't want to list out negative one plus i eight times and multiply that whole thing out. It would be crazy. So what we're going to do is use de Moivre's theorem. So say my complex number is just negative one plus i. I'm just going to focus on this part right here. Okay, let's write that in trig form. So r would equal the square root of negative 1 plus 1. So that's negative 1 squared plus 1 squared, sorry. 
negative one squared plus one squared, so that's gonna be rad two. And then notice the real part's negative, the imaginary part's positive, so we're in quadrant two. And tangent of theta is negative one. So that means theta is three pi over four. So my complex number z in trig form is rad two cis three pi over four. Okay, looks good. Now we're gonna raise it to the eighth. Using De Moivre's theorem, I take rad two, I raise it to the eighth, and then I have cis three pi over four times eight. So this exponent matches the exponent on R, and it's the same number that you multiply the angle by. Okay, rad two to the eighth. If I square rad two, it becomes two, and I have four pairs of those, so that's gonna be 16. And then cis, three pi over four times eight is gonna be six pi. Okay, now six pi is the same as zero, so this is 16 cis zero. And I know cosine of zero plus i sine zero is gonna be 16 times one plus i times zero, so this is just 16. So anyways, aren't you so glad you didn't sit there and go negative one plus i times negative one plus i and start the foiling nightmare of your dreams eight times? Because all you would have ended up with is 16. Everything else would have canceled out. Thank you, Demoivre. Okay, last one. We have negative rad three over two minus one half i raised to the 50th power. Okay, do you recognize these values? Negative rad three over two, negative one half. Can you already tell what r is gonna equal? Negative rad three over two squared plus negative one half squared. They're values from the unit circle, right? So what's the radius on the unit circle? It's one. So this is three fourths plus a fourth, four fourths, this is one. Okay. And then tangent of theta is gonna be one half over rad three over two. They're both negative, but it cancels. So you get one over rad three. And this complex number is in quadrant three, which means theta is equal to seven pi over six. So I can write z as cis seven pi over six. So if I need to raise z to the 50th power, r was one, I didn't write it. I'll put it in there if you need to feel complete. So one to the 50th, and then you have cis seven pi over six times 50. So this is just gonna be one times cis. This is gonna be 175 pi over three. Okay, well I know six pi over three is equal to two pi, right? And subtracting six pi over three over and over and over, this is gonna be cis of 174 pi over three plus pi over three. This should be a three, excuse me. And 174 pi over three, that gives us 58 pi. So basically that's unnecessary, right? That's an even multiple of pi. So this is the same as cis of just pi over three. So this is cosine of pi over three plus i sine pi over three, which is gonna give us one half plus rad three over two i. Voila, we are done. So that concludes Demois theorem and section 8.3.